Today we're going to microwave a bull bling. Hi, I'm Kent and welcome to Turn a Wood Bull. Now, you might be thinking, why in the world would we microwave a bull blink? Well, what I've done here is I just finished turning this. This is the first turning of a twice turned bull. It's not very attractive and it's really thick. Well, that's all part of the process. The reason we leave these walls thick is that the bowl is going to change as it dries. It's going to change shape. The pith areas will move outward and the sides will pull in and it will make it more oval. And that's the whole purpose of twice turning. And if you haven't seen my twice turning video, go check that out because I go through great detail how to twice turn. And basically what's, what happens is if you want to have a nice true round bowl and you're using green wood or wood that's wet, then you need to twice turn it. So the first turning is a rough turning and it is the wall thickness is about one tenth of the diameter of the bowl. So this bowl is about eight inches wide and I made it about eight tenths of an inch or just over three quarters of an inch wide um, for the, the wall thickness. So why would we want a microwave? Well, there's a lot of options for drying this. I could just stick it on a shelf and hope for the best. There's a chance that there may be cracking that occurs on the ingrain because the ingrain will let that moisture out faster than the side grain. So you're going to have uneven drying going on and that's, that can be a problem. Well, to, to help that, you can put anchor seal on just the ingrain and then stick it on a shelf. You could put this in a dryer, a simple contained box with a light bulb in it that's creating heat and it raises the temperature. That's still going to take a month, maybe two months to do well depending on the temperature and the humidity and all that sort of stuff. You also have to remember something too, is that every different tree species is going to react differently, plus when the tree was cut and how much moisture is, it was in it. Now this I know was actually cut several months ago, and I recently just cut it into logs and split that log and then made the bull blank. Well, there's still plenty of moisture in here. I've had logs that I've, I've kept on hand for over four years that still had plenty of moisture in it. So again, it depends on the species, it depends on the moisture, it depends on your environment, a lot of different things. But essentially, what we're gonna do is we're gonna speed up the drying process. And that is the whole purpose of using the microwave. And the cool thing about the microwave is we can accelerate the amount of moisture evaporating from the bull blank. Let me go ahead and show you how I do this. Before we head over to the microwave, there are a few other things we need to gather together. We're really going to want to have a scale to keep track of the weight of the bowl. And you're going to need a spacer to lift the bowl. And I'll show you what we're going to be doing with that in just a minute. But you also want to take good notes. And I was just, I want to show you something else too as we're doing this. I'm going to take the pith, the pith ends, and I'm going to put those on top and bottom of this paper. And I'm going to do a tracing of this. So here's our first... Here's where we begin. We begin, and we've got the pith area at the top and bottom, and this will help you see how this shape changes as we progress. Now, with the scale, what we want to do is we want to weigh the bowl. I'm going to zero out the scale and change it from ounces to grams. Grams gives us a little bit more accurate measurement. And looking at the bowl right now, it's 906 grams. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down on the paper here. I'm going to write down first 906. And now it's time for the microwave. We're not trying to cook the bowl blank. We're just trying to get the moisture out of it. So the first turning is going to be 30 seconds. And that's it. So we'll let that go 30 seconds. Now you should feel some warmth on this. You gotta be careful, it can get hot in areas too. But right now it feels warm and the exterior feels moist. That's exactly what we want. Now let's bring it over and set it to rest. This is where our spacer comes into play. And what you want to do is you want to place this upside down with that spacer lifting it up. And the reason for this is it's giving us the most exposed area so that the moisture can move away from the wood itself. If we put face down, then that moisture inside here is going to be trapped. If we put it on the tenon, the moisture from the tenon is going to be trapped. So basically you just want to leave it upside, upright just a touch 
and let that air move freely around it and let it set. I let these set for at least 30 minutes, sometimes an hour. If they're feeling really hot, uh, I'll leave it sit for like an hour and let that rest. Now, I, I know you heard microwave and you thought, well, this is going to go really quick. This is dramatically quick compared to leaving it sit for a year or many, many months for that matter. We'll be able to do this in the course of a day or two. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep coming back every hour or so and running it another 30 seconds in the microwave and then letting it cool and letting that moisture evaporate. I'll keep taking notes here and I'll keep measuring it and I'll let you guys know how it progresses. So I've been drying this in the microwave for about three days now. I started at intervals of 30 seconds in the microwave and letting it cool, which sometimes 30 minutes, an hour. If I'd forget about it, maybe an hour and a half, and I'd come back and run another cycle. What I was finding after a day's worth of running this at 30 seconds, it really wasn't getting super hot. So I decided to up the amount of uh, time in the microwave to 45 seconds. And that warmed it up a little bit more. And, and basically, it's it's done really well. Now, I was keeping notes this whole time. I've got 30 different sessions in the microwave. And each one of these sessions, uh, I've marked the weight in grams. And what's amazing is you can see that this bowl has lost one-third of its weight just from, from moisture loss. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but you can see the pith area has raised up just a bit. Well, that's what we're looking for. And when you put that on a surface, it's not going to be level. These are the things you really don't want in a nice finished bowl. You don't want it to be wobbly in that. When you take it off the lathe, it sits perfect. But if there's a ton of moisture in there still and it moves, then it's going to get wobbly. That's why we do twice turnings. When I started this drying, I made a tracing of the original perimeter of the bowl. Let me line up the pith ends here. The pith has not expanded out as far as I thought it would. It did go up but the sides did pull in too. I mean, so there, now you can see the, the two shapes, the size, how much the sides pulled in, and then the top, the top pushed out just a bit, but not a, not a lot. And you can see how the side pulled in over here. The outside line is the, it, the outside line is the original, uh, perimeter of the bowl and the inside line is the new line where the sides have pulled in. So that's how the shape has changed. Now by putting it back on the lathe for a twice turning that will be trued up again and it won't be this oval. Now um, at, since I brought that up I also want to make another point is you don't have to microwave just twice turnings. If you have once turn bowls that you also want to um, get the moisture out of and dry a little bit quicker, you can microwave them as well. But just keep in mind that if you're turning a wet piece of wood to its final wall thickness and you start drying it, what's going to happen is it's going to shape and distort. A lot of times that's actually, it can be really cool looking and some people prefer that and some people just don't prefer it. It's your personal choice. I've turned both. I'll, I turn bowls that are once turned and just let them dry and if they move a little bit, that's fine. I've had some that move a lot. And that's, that's fine too. But then if you really want a nice, clean, round bowl, then twice turning is the way to go. So this bowl is uh, mulberry, this particular blank, and it's not doing a lot of movement. And like I mentioned before, every species is going to be different and every piece of wood that you have is going to be different based on the uh, moisture content, your humidity, all those sorts of things. So you kind of need to be be curious when you're doing this process and kind of explore. That's why this list and keeping track of the weight is so important. Essentially what we're weighing is the moisture leaving the bowl. And the ultimate goal, if you, if you want to get a purely equalized bowl blank, now when I say equalized, I mean that it is equalized to your environment. There's no piece of wood that has zero moisture, nor would you want that because it's going to be brittle and hard and very difficult to work with. But 
An equalized bowl blank means that the moisture content inside the cells of the wood is equalized for its particular environment. Where I'm at is a very humid environment, so this may be just a little higher than if it were in some other location. Um, if you want to equalize your bowl blank and really get it down as far as you need to or down to equalization, you can continue this process of weighing with the scale until you don't see any change. In other words, the moisture has left the bowl and the bowl, the only thing that's left is the wood and that's what you're weighing. And once that, that, that weight stabilizes, you really can't do any more. You're not gonna be able to get more moisture out of it. Now, if you do put it in a heat-oriented dryer, such as a dryer that you make with a, with a light or with a heat source, it is possible to suck more moisture out of the wood than is in the surrounding air. And I've done that before because I had a bowl that I thought was needed to come down in weight. Like it, I, I, I thought it needed to lose some moisture and I was weighing it and I had it in a dryer and it was a really hot dryer and it had been there a long time. As I was weighing it days after it sitting in the house environment inside, the bowl was actually gaining weight meaning that the fibers of the wood had dried out below the average humidity in the, in the room, and it was actually sucking up moisture in the air and storing it in the cells. So the bowl actually gained weight. And that's what I'm talking about, equalizing. There's no such thing as dry. You're basically going to equalize the moisture in the wood to the, the ambient humidity in, in the particular environment that you're in. So that's how you dry a bowl blank in the microwave. Now keep in mind, this is only gonna take a couple days. It seems like a lot, but this is almost an inch thick. The rule of thumb is an inch thick of wood material, if just left on a shelf to equalize or dry, should take about a year. So this is um, a process that I did probably in about four days, three days, versus a year. So this is a great alternative for, for speeding up the drying process. I hope you've liked this video and you've learned something new here, the biggest takeaway is to know that every single piece of wood that you use on the lathe is going to be different in one way or another. And just get comfortable with the types of woods that you have access to so that you start becoming familiar with how they're going to react and what they will do over time. And this, this whole process will be a lot easier. But also be curious and be experimental, take good notes, and keep track of what you've done because you're gonna learn a lot during this process. I hope you like this video. If, uh, if you have, please click the like button. If you're not already subscribing, please subscribe. I have tons more great videos about turning wood bowls and all the topics that are related to turning wood bowls all ready for you. And with that in mind too, uh, go check out my website, turnwoodbowl.com. There's tons and tons of information there for you. If you're currently turning or if you're even thinking about turning wood bowls, go check that out. And until next time, happy turning.